place. Yeah, well, no, I might. I, I think he was at my house because my, my, my house alarm wouldn't stop going up. My, uh, my fire alarm wouldn't stop going off. That's true. I've been to my house. Same exact thing. That's what I mean. <laughs> no, I think I, I recognize, I just recognized him. <laughs> yeah. We unplugged all of them, which I know is not a good thing, but there are points where it's like, all right, too much. All right. Welcome, everyone, to the uh, Valentine's Day edition 2018. Uh, because it's Valentine's Day, we have a limited crowd here at the uh, Finance Committee meeting. Uh, we are continuing our uh, series of meetings with department heads going over the FY19 proposed budget. Uh, tonight, we have the distinct pleasure of having our fire chief, John Nuttall, here with us. And I think we can get right into it. What chief. better way to celebrate Valentine's Day by listening to the fire department budget? Right? Yes. Perfect. Red <laughs> Keeping things hot. I do have some emails for everybody here. This is a packet of information, which you don't necessarily have to read all this tonight. But this it's going to be a primer for Thank some you. of the uh, things we'll be talking about, as well as I do have one fairly large warrant article. I have some extras if sure. And if any members of are here can we? Basically, what's in your packet in, in kind of the top sheet is a brief synopsis of, of pretty much my whole budget request, which we'll certainly go into that as well. Um, the budget I'm requesting tonight is a level service budget. Uh, there are no contractual increases as of this date. However, the union contract does end June 30th of this year, just before FY19. Um, I do not know if any um, work has proceeded on that. I, I think this, there were very initial stages on that. So I don't know if there could be changes prior to FY19 on this. But right now, the budget I'll be, re be requesting reflects a status quo budget because of that. And just as an aside, if there is, uh, if there are going to be uh, increases, uh, salary increases pursuant to a collective bargaining agreement, it would likely be in a separate article, funding article, uh, in addition to the budget. So it would be Okay, thank you, Rick. Yes. Uh, the budget, and again, we'll get into it, but just as a quick, a couple of very minor changes over the years. There was a slight increase of $7,000 to the equipment repair and maintenance budget. When we get into it, I can explain that. Um, this is to incorporate the lease purchase of two cardiac monitors, which initially had been on my capital request. I have changed that and removed the capital request because the company that we purchase our um, cardiac monitors from now has a lease purchase option that previously was not available and we really needed a cardiac monitor um, badly. So I have begun in FY18 funding out of my existing budget the first year's payment of a, um, a four-year lease payment for one monitor. At the end of that period, I expect to replace the other one, and we're going to kind of try to build this into the budget rather than trying to come as an emergency um, capital request every several years on these because it really is an operating cost. So th there will be a $7,000 increase in that. You may see that little spike. That's what that is. It, it it's, has been removed from the capital request budget, however. A couple of other minor expense increases really are only there to reflect the previous couple of years' actuals, which really it's the telephone line item and the dues and the fees. Um, Verizon just continues to uh, increase our payments, as well as some of the technology requirements. We have more um, air cards for the cardiac monitors and some of the equipment that we have. That That's really what's, what's driven that. But I'm trying to balance out the budget to reflect the actuals on that. Um, I have submitted for the town a Mass Health Medicaid refund. We've done this the last couple of years. Um, it's a, a fairly large process. It's a simple process, but ultimately I'm hoping to see a refund of $82,000 for the town, which would go back into the ambulance receipts. This is not guaranteed. Sean could speak at length on this much more than I could. 
Um, however, I'm hoping that we will get that to help supplement the ambulance, um, the anticipated ambulance receipts that do help to offset our budget every year anyway. Uh, we also submitted a, an additional FEMA assistance to firefighters grant this year in the amount of $79,000 to um, purchase rescue equipment, for example, the Jaws of Life and that type of related equipment that we do need. And again, you haven't really seen that on a capital request because we're trying this again. We did try the same grant last year for the same equipment. Um, due to some of the changes in the federal government, it did not go through last year. We are trying this again with and I'm much more hopeful that we can do that. If that's the case, then again, that equipment would be paid for by the feds instead of a capital request, which you'd probably see next year. But we're, we're trying that again to, to prevent having to levy that in the town. Um, and I do have a warrant article, which I'm gonna hold off on this now because we, we can probably talk, I'll keep that separate just yep. to avoid confusion. So everybody has that top sheet, which has those notes I explained. <laughs> I did print out a copy of my 2017 annual report of the fire department. I did forward that to you via email as well. You may have that already. This, and again, you can read at your uh, convenience. However, one thing that would reflect tonight, which again is the warrant article, I am stating publicly um, our apparatus needs. So I, I wanted to give this committee a chance to at least have uh, to be aware of that prior to this going public, because I also had to notify the residents as well, pretty much where we are. And for the first time, I included a chart in the in your report, just stating what we have for the apparatus fleet, the, the engines, the ambulance, some of the ancillary equipment in the year that they were uh, built uh, or acquired by the town. Just, just I, I think some people have asked that before, and, and it's important that this committee also knows what that would be, because that would be reflective of a, a warrant article later on. You also have a copy of the actual warrant article. And most of the other papers are all related to the warrant article, so I can hold off on that and talk about that afterwards. So without further ado, I'm assuming you want to get right into the budget. That would be excellent. And just so we're literally on the same page, because I my budget's broken down into the ambulance and the general, so or it's ambulance and fire, which would be the town side. Um, what, I'd suggest maybe doing the fire side first with the simplicity. The ambulance is very, um, it almost mirrors the, the fire, the general government side. The only difference is the funding for the ambulance budget um, is obtained from ambulance receipts. It's an offset. So I'm assuming the first page, if we're looking at the same thing, the first one should be fire salaries budget. Yes. Um, of the request is for one million fifty-eight thousand one sixty-six, and this is for um, basically half of the employees. Half of the employees, their annual salary is funded on the general side. The other half of the employees, or just under half, is funded on the ambulance side. Um, and again, as I previously stated, this is status quo as of FY18, unless or until there is a um, any change in the union contract. Um, I'm just going to go down these. If anybody has a question, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll continue. Below that is the overtime budget appropriation. That amount is for 211505 This covers oh, overtime, and I try to explain this every year. Overtime is used in really three different manners. Um, it is going to be throughout this budget several times, and we'll, we'll come into this. It is for shift coverage meaning if a firefighter is out on vacation or holiday or sick or injury or any other absence, we need to maintain that position. We maintain six members per shift. Um, and I, if, if one firefighter is out, I have to replace that position for the hours that they're out, either a 10 or a 14 hour shift normally um, with overtime. So that's one type of overtime we use is shift coverage. Another type of overtime that is common is for when we have large incidents such as a fire, a storm, um, if we're using the jaws of life, if we're doing CPR, if, if we have diff different types of emergency incidents that will overtax the on-duty shift and we need to supplement the on-duty shift with additional resources brought in from off-duty members. Or similar to that would be is if we have too many calls going on, 
we may have one or two or three um, emergencies going on at once. And, and again, we've diluted the on-duty shift so much that there's nobody left should another alarm or incident come in. So we bring in off-duty members to, um, to backfill the fire station, if you will, to backfill the apparatus, not even the station, but either an ambulance or the engine or the forest fire. Um, the third type of overtime that's used is really is training. Um, there are just some training evolutions where you cannot do on duty. Uh, it actually could be dangerous or you're going to lose the training evolution. We're a fairly busy department. If you're in the middle of a class, you know, for instance, Friday we have the Mass Fire Academy coming down. We're hosting them. They're going to do an ice drill. I'm hoping we still have ice. I think we still will. Um, <laughs> We had three inches as of the other day, and we're, we're watching that closely. However, to try to have the on-duty crews do a large drill like that, if because we have to get suited up uh, in the ice suits, you're tethered, you're 20, 30 feet out offshore, as you can imagine, and then if a call comes in for a medical emergency, it, it's just simply not available. So I have to really do a lot of that with off-duty members or replace the on-duty shift, and, and we'll end up doing that. We'll, we'll kind of swap a little bit. So some training evolutions simply cannot be done on duty, or if they're far away, if it's a fire academy or an area, town hosting it, it it's difficult to have the on-duty shift do that. So that's why we use overtime. It's always to maintain the shift strength. That's really one of the main reasons we have it. If you added one two whatever it is could you could you bring that down and and you know another person could be a firefighter like or is it just no matter what it is we're always going to have overtime that equals 200 grand it's an excellent question sure. uh, and some towns have done that some towns have tried that um and i'll be honest with you i wouldn't be opposed to it either the way this would work or the theory behind this is let's hire four more firefighters we'll bump the shifts from six members to seven and you don't fill when one member is out. Right. The only additional cost not reflected to prevent us from doing that, or which has prevented traditionally the town from doing that, is the health care benefits. Yeah. That really is the reason we end up using the overtime. Yeah. So to Chief Olson, another piece would be the, um, the unfunded pension liability that also Correct. trails with that. So it's, right. and in public safety equally, go back two years when we had monstrous amounts of snow. Mm -hmm you had equivalent amount of overtime the budget would have to go because you have the staff to be able to prepare life safety of the providers as well as the, the community so in the public safety piece i see overtime as a natural mm -hmm. um, the question i think that we've always asked here is is the value that we currently have in there the best value and having the benefits of seeing that budget year over year over year that overtime budget has more or less been stagnant except for the one that i just called out which was that snow piece um, but as, as we talk here, just as a general statement, the unfunded pension liabilities and the health care costs are really what do drive, like, why, what and how would you make decisions? And, mm -hmm. um, that aside, I think, obviously, the more folks that are on and available to take care of people, the better, as long as the talent can afford it. And, exactly. and one of the things, just for a, for a historical perspective for some of the newer members, is uh, during some of the, the budget crunch of the past 10 years, uh, we were down to five members mm -hmm. on a shift at a four. time. We were down to four, yes. which was not only not ideal, it was not always safe. And the injuries went up, the line of duty injuries were, were, have, had gone up. Um, and not to say that that would cause that. We have a younger department than we had back then. However, when you start to condense the, the workload with fewer employees, the, the stress was getting there just you know we were getting more injuries from it um, we've diluted the workload somewhat by hiring additional employees although you know to be on to be fair to you know make sure that we're comparing apples to apples and not apples to oranges the firefighters we hired are younger so that also could not to say that they cannot get injured too but just you know some of the traditional injuries back injuries uh, a lot of joint strains and like that younger firefighters can get that as well any person can get that but they tend to be more prevalent on older ones um, so now that we have a, a younger department you know the average age went from about 56 down to probably 34 which is massive oh, wow. which is a great benefit for this town um, that's and just the growth that we, we've seen with our department you know the changes in our department sure and another point like you like you talked about and like we talked about with the police last week um, hiring one person does not 
decrease the uh, right. overtime amount yeah. by the exact amount. Yeah, yeah. There, there are things like you said with the training. Correct. That will always need overtime. For, so. A lot of the unfunded liabilities, exactly like, like Sean said, I agree. Um, that usually is what keeps more small towns comparable to Abington from being able to increase the, the entire employee pool, um, paying for it out of overtime. Just, just you know, again, the health care yeah. is, is a massive one, sure. as well as the retirement, those things. On my end, it would be, you know, we also have to train and outfit them. You know, a set of firefighter gear is roughly um, $2,500 per member and, and they have two sets because they need it in case one is damaged or contaminated. So, you know, yeah, that's a, sh that's a shorter piece actually. That would, you know, it's 5,000 per right. member, but it, it begins to balloon up. But sure. really it's the healthcare. That's, I think, what really has traditionally prevented us from doing it. And that was when, when we were able to obtain four members with the Federal SAFER grant a couple years ago. And that, that is what got us from five to six members. That was a concern that it really didn't include the, the health care. And we were able to prove that the ambulance salaries are offsetting those salaries. And, you know, the town picked up somewhat on the health care. And between the savings with reduction in injuries, it's, it's working. You know, but we're fortunate and, and we thank the town for doing that. But to keep hiring that, it just gets more expensive for the town. Sure. I would certainly ask for them. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to, sure. you know, I don't want to say we'll never ask for additional manpower because I can see a need for this, especially as the town continues to grow and as Southfield continues to grow. I, I, this town is changing, as, as I think we all know. You're all seeing the, just the traffic every day. It's only going to get worse, you know. So I can see when Southfield begins to build out, we may seriously need almost an additional eight firefighters. And that translates, that number translates down to having two more firefighters per shift. We, we run four shifts um, all the time to maintain 24-hour coverage for the town. And that's only putting one extra piece of apparatus, whether it be an engine or an ambulance or cross-staffed. Sure. That's where the eight would come from. Um, I realize that's a large hit, and I, I realize that's not a simple thing to get done. Just hiring one or two firefighters, if they're on the line, really doesn't help us. Okay. Um, that's it more would help my... the, It would help the fire prevention end which again if Southfield begins to build out that may begin to tax the amount of work that the deputy is able to do by himself yep. he may become overwhelmed with that and I may look to see one additional member for that this is theoretical in the future it's not reflective tonight but looking at the big picture um, I can certainly see a request for nine additional firefighters and it's realistic it's not anything anybody's going to want to hear anytime soon but it's because of the growth in town so I don't know if that answered your question. It was a long answer. Yeah, no, 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 it's good. But it's it, an excellent question, and, it, it's, and, and it gets brought up, and, and it's a valid question. Why can't you just, you know, take the, the funding that's sitting there in the overtime and just hire more and drop? But we still, at one point, would still have to maintain a minimum anyway. And if you sure. had two firefighters out or injuries, you still need the overtime for that, right. too. I, I wish it was easier. Th these are the things that keep us up at night trying to... You know, come up with a theoretical budget based on you just never know what's going to happen yeah, with I injuries understand. or incidents. Oh, I understand. So. Thank you. Okay. Below that, the next line, we have education incentive budget. This is um, up slightly. This is 48000 This is a contractual item where a lot of the, the younger firefighters are really taking advantage of the, uh, the college incentive. Um, that is built into the contract. These are degrees based on um, fire or emergency management, and, and they're they're going to college for that. So you, there's a cost for that, but you know the the other the plus side is we have a very um, highly educated fire force as well. So, but that that's what that is. The holidays budget appropriation of fifty two thousand three fifty seven. Again, this is to maintain. Uh, the shift when when they're off. This is um, contractually they each get I think it's 11 holidays per member and a lot of them now have converted that to to be able to use this for time off. They used to just get paid a stipend and um, the union a couple years ago um, 
proposed and the town agreed that instead of just paying them that money, they can actually use it for time off. It, it increased their time off, their vacation time, at no additional cost to the town. So either way, we're spending it either to pay them for the holidays or to backfill. Similar conversation we had with the police chief. Last okay. Week, so. So just quick, so that and so that is a separate one from the the overtime budget. Correct. The the overtime. The, let me go back up. The the one that just says overtime for the two eleven, the two hundred eleven five hundred five. Yep. That would be for the callback, the the fires, the storms. That's kind of maintaining that. That's that portion of the overtime. Sure. Um, and, and every day we're we're, we're we're we call it striking the box, which means. You know, for whatever reason, we're overstaffed or we need additional help. Usually, lately, it's because we have multiple calls going on. I have both ambulances transporting, generating the money. However, now I've lost two of the, I've lost um, four of the six members. They're now at either Brockton or South Shore Hospital, sometimes further away, which leaves two firefighters back. And sometimes one of them are on one of the ambulances as well as a third party. Mm -hmm. So that's just to supplement the to protect the town with other sure. firefighters. So yes, you're, to answer your question, this is a separate overtime um, breakdown, if you will. Yep, thanks. A temporary upgrade differential budget for 2,304. We're not, we're not using this as much, actually, because we've, um, we've really reorganized the department. This is when we have a lower ranking member temporarily filling in, usually per shift, for a higher ranking member. Meaning, if for some reason a captain is out for the shift and they can't get another captain to work for them, a, f a senior firefighter will work the role of the captain and he is then getting that pay grade. It also could be if the deputy's on vacation or if the deputy's out and a captain bumps up to that position, um, at that point the captain would be getting deputy's pay. Um, it's a fairly small amount. We, we don't use this as much for a while ago we had a lot of acting positions and we were using this more often it's, it's a contractual item but that's what that is that's what that represents specialist site stipend budget this is another contractual in fact almost all of these are, are contractual items this um, the union members each get um, th there's a, a cafeteria list or a, a list of stipends that they get for um, I don't have that list in front of me, for technical rescue, for hazardous material, for hazardous material decon. We've actually cleaned this up. It's, it's more appropriate to how a modern fire department works now. Several years ago, this really represented some skills which were either incorporated into what they do anyway or they, they were somewhat antiquated. So this has actually been, been cleaned up a bit and modernized at their last contract. Vacation budget of 196, 371. Again, each member contractually is um, allotted several weeks vacation depending upon the seniority or the longevity they've had in employment. And this represents backfilling their absence once they're on vacation. Sick leave. Um, this is also sick or line of duty, injured, you know, injured on duty as well. Um, as well as two, you know, there's a personal day that it's a contractual thing. It's actually charged to their sick budget. Um, it, it's all how the contract is written. And each member is allotted, um, theoretically, so many, uh, so many shifts per year. Um, and that's how I, the formula that I use to come up with this, which is, it's actually fairly spot on. So a bereavement, this is 6000 991, this is also based on an estimate. This is to cover a member who is out on bereavement. Uh, we just had a member last week lose his mother. Um, so, he, you know, he contractually, they're allotted so many shifts per degree of the family member. This gets a little detailed, but as you can imagine. But, you know, if it's, if it's a aunt or like that, they may get one full shift off. If it's a, a much closer relative or a God forbid a spouse or a child, they get more. So um, th these aren't used much, but th this is based on an estimate of um, so many absences department-wide per year. Sick leave incentive of 3,495. Again, it's a contractual incentive. If that they don't use, utilize any sick time within a, a six-month period, they will get 
Um, I think it's one shift street time pay. Uh, this, again, is based on an estimate, but it, it's fairly close. Other budget appropriations of 43695 This This is kind of a catch-all in the um, personnel salary side. This can cover um, some contractual items such as um, training, actually. That each member is allotted 24 hours a year to attend a, a fire training, usually at the Mass Fire Academy. And they either can get paid to go if they're off duty or if they're on duty, this would backfill their position. This has some of the protective clothing in it as well. Um, just, just a couple other contractual items. In-service training on the fire side. Uh, this is actually split up uh, for fire in EMS training. Uh, and it's, it's allotted so many hours per member per year. That's how that comes out. And the other benefits is very similar to the, the former other benefits. This is more um, protective clothing. I, I budget every year for approximately five sets of gear, coats, pants, helmets. Um, as they do over time, there's a life span for gear of no more than 10 years. We're actually in very good shape with that, but this also replaces damaged or worn or other gear such as that. And that's basically it for the salary portion of, of the budget. Back, backing quickly to the other budget, not the other benefits. Yep. The other the other budget. Um, I'm going to look up my notes here because I want to be a little bit well. a little bit more of a jump than most of the others. Um, was there a specific thing that was tied to that? Is that the five one nine zero? That is five one nine zero. Yes. You can just bear with me for a moment. I just want to look at my notes on that. That's reflective also. I, 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 the jump on that was due to some of the education, contractual education benefit. The education benefit is twofold. One portion of it um, pays the tuition. The other one main pays a stipend that if they get uh, per degree. Again, because we have more members currently going to school right now, to college, that tuition portion went up somewhat. That was reflective of what that jump was, I believe. I'm hoping over a couple of years that will come back down where it traditionally was. Thank you. Okay, yeah, that's what that was. Just, can I just make one just thing? Just, uh, I'm just going over a lot of these different things. They sort of seem like they are in sort of the same bucket, they and, are. I, and, they, and they're sort of broken out. Um, is it? I mean, double dipping might not be the best term. I'm just in my brain. I'm, so if like sick leave and vacation and all those things, and I know that it's part of the uh, the, uh, the bargaining thing, but is there a is there a way to? Is it just there is no? We don't really have much leverage on things like that, or is it just? We do. It is what it is. It, it, it is what it is. Or is it? it can, I'm sorry if I'm like so green. I just. <laughs> no, nope, no. Nope, it's it, it's an excellent question. I'm actually glad you bring it up because these are questions that you know once yeah, you all sure. come up and, and I know a lot of the residents at home watching wouldn't know either. Everything's spelled out specifically in the contract. Yep. How if they utilize more than a certain amount of sick days, there's a there's a procedure for that. It, it has to be a doctor's note to come back. They, the vacation time is specific when it can be used, uh, you know, per employee, what they have. Uh, and, and we don't go over, nobody goes over that. You know, we, we track that internally as well as downstairs here at Town Hall. Um, it's just, these are all the different funding sources for the different portions of their contract. Does that answer your question? Or? I think the sure. yeah, town keep, manager. Keep in mind, this is for budgeting purposes. So, yeah. you know, uh, the town votes a budget its salaries. Only one big line item, but yep. for the purposes of, of uh, you know, for budgeting and for tracking, you know, this is how you know the chief breaks it out uh, to get to a bottom line, and this is how you know for accountability purposes, uh, you know, you, you can put it together in terms of how you budget contractual requirements. You know, so it's not so much you know double dipping per se, but you know how else would you add up the contractual requirements, but to break it down essentially line item by line item. So 
Yeah. It's, it's really just trying to provide more granular detail for us to know this is like instead of just giving us the the bottom line of the salary is 1.9 million sure etc it's to uh, no i mean and and, and i and i appreciate that yeah. somebody so. takes a vacation you know a good deal of the time you have to fill a shift a good deal of the time maybe yeah. not all the time if you have a certain staffing level at that point in time but a good deal of the time you have no choice but to have to back fill a shift so sure the, the format here, this is a newer system this year, the, the Vader system, the KVS, and, you know, the other ones were broken down a little bit more. This format didn't break it down as much on this sheet. Sure. I, can, I can certainly get that to you. Sean. But to, to, I want to actually defer to Greg. Let me yeah. finish with the question. Yep. I, I was just going to offer some in, in support of what he's mo More of, it, it, so instead of, the, the reason I said double dividends might not be the best wording. I, I, I don't always come up with the best wording for things. Okay. But more like if... It, it, it all sounds like it is sort of like an overtime thing, right? Like a, a time and a half kind of a deal. And it, it's sort of broken down in different in these different things. So when you look at the overtime at 211 and then you, you add in the 52 and then you add in the 196, and it, it's a much bigger number than maybe I was accustomed to seeing or maybe thinking I was going to see. And that's why I was asking if it's – and I'm not saying you're getting paid or somebody no, else. No. Paid. That's not it, the question. This, it's just this, more this of a – sheet's not as – Detailed as yep. I think some of the other formats we've had in the past. Okay, um, is, is probably the best way to put that. I, you know, again, this is this is strictly the line item and the number um, to come up with this number when I enter into the system. And, and again, I do this separately. My my budget, I I formulate on an Excel spreadsheet, and then I transfer those numbers onto the town's format, yep. if you will. And mine is much more detailed how I'm coming up with these numbers. I think it just simply wasn't on this sheet, at least. May, they may all be the same. It just wasn't as as broken down, detailed like I think it's some of the other years. Okay. Sure. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. So, so, so <clears throat> as I hear the question, as I kind of go through, I think I've had the benefit in your former roles as uh, mm -hmm. as union president of of detailing and going through kind of the value, looking at the proposed CBA and saying, okay, what is the actual value contribution and how does that line up to this? And that that's how I see it. I, I understand. I think I understand fully when I look at a salary line and then there is a lot of fringe that actually adds to the comp that's available. So as an example, um, you know, temporary upgrade. I think it's perfectly appropriate to have an acting lieutenant make acting lieutenant's pay if that ever happens or a captain for that matter. Um, and, but when you look at the, the bereavement, the vacation, the sick, the holidays, those are just, those are all additional dollars that get attributed to or the training. Mm -hmm. Me as a paramedic. I have to pay for my own training. The mm -hmm. town pays for not only to attend the training, but to attend the training, right? They pay for the training. And that's what I looked at these as all accoutrements. So here's the, the value added of all the contract. And that's what I look at the salaries yeah. line. This is what a firefighter makes his base salary, and these are all the things that get added mm -hmm. um, to that base salary. At least that's. Yeah, and that's what. Uh, and, and that's. My, my my brain doesn't work that way, so I'm, try, I'm trying to I'm trying I, I'm, I'm trying to get it around there. So not, not many it, people's brains. Work yeah. So <laughs> if I had to look at the other, any other department's budget, I'd probably be I'd be totally lost too. I know mine. I've known it for years. You know, oh, he said it better, way better than I. Did, and and I even the, even um, you know, for what Sean said, a lot of the training and again, it's contracts. The, the contracts got the detail, obviously, that, that's not reflected here. Um, a lot of the training. Um, they don't get paid as much as it's, it's been rolled in. They used to, you know, there, there was even more pay for that. And a lot of that was given up last time. That was, it's actually been rolled in somewhat. So, I mean, they're still getting, but it's rolled in as opposed to to that. So we, we did a lot of work really kind of cleaning up their contract the last time. Basically their budget, the salary budget is like their base pay and everything else is the perks. Correct. So or sure. perks meaning benefits. to like benefits for, for, for them to yes. their to perks. maintain yes. and to say okay yes. this is what and you will get maintain. if you work here and maintain here and whatever correct because if essentially if, cor yes. yes if, if yes. we didn't have some of these on the town's end for the, the benefit the of the town yeah. um they may be you know down to two firefighters on shift i mean it's right. at some point it, yeah. or, or right. we'd be saying no to vacation time right or, you know, exactly right. Exactly. this maintain you know the budget is reflective of, of maintaining six member shifts 24 hours a day which includes uh, maintaining two ambulances in service 24 hours a day unless there's one down from a kid there's very f there are occasions we will gray one ambulance out for one reason or another usually it's an operational thing a storm or such 
like that. But most of the time, the goal, and, and we've attained that goal most of the time, is to maintain six members per shift, two ambulances, and one ambulance is cross-staffed with the tower truck um, with a pair of firefighters instead of a single firefighter. We used to have one firefighter going out, which on their own to um, any type of incident. Sometimes they, they were going by themselves to an incident, not just in the truck, but to the incident. So at least with the buddy system, with the six-man shifts, we're able to eliminate that, that hazard. That's rare when that happens. And the only time that happens now is if it's a third call or off-duty help coming in to backfill the station. If there's only one firefighter that comes in and tells somebody else, because they're going to go, they're not going to wait. That's the only time we're really seeing one member go out now. And again, a lot of this, I think, attributes to the reduction in the, in the injuries, if, if that makes sense. And this last question is going to be terrible, so I'm going to try, try to phrase it as nice That's as I can. That's what I'm here for. So. It, at, at what point do you get to, we've had this many things happen in a year, or this many things happen in a day, whatever, and we had so many days where nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Is there a point where you say, okay, six is the right number or 12 is the right number to it I, I i just you're giving me a ton of numbers which i believe you in all of them it just it are we at that number where it's we're good pretty much as of right now until we start adding i think yes i think right now we're good i mean yep. we always use more absolutely sure. right now abington has two firefighters per truck you go up the street one mile they have four firefighters per truck you go up the street another mile of brockton they have three or four firefighters per truck same buildings, same motor vehicle accidents. Yep. We're doing the same work with half the staff. Would I like to have the staffing they have? Absolutely. Do I really expect that to happen? Probably not. Sure. So with that being said, because I can't ignore that, um, due to the call volume that we have, and, and that's always changing, and that we're seeing a, a flux with that again, both with the Route 18 widening project, we're going to start to see more traffic which may reduce our response times we're going to start to hopefully not see more motor vehicle accidents but anybody going up and down route 18 you you see it it's it's much more congested and confusing as we build out southfield as we're looking to rehab some major vacant mill structures that are in town residential that's going to increase we're still building um, housing developments everywhere in town there's proposals to build a an industrial area off of Chestnut Street. I don't know what that's going to do to our car volume. It's not going to reduce it. Um, so with that in the forecast for the future down the road, that may affect what our staffing needs are right now. Right now, it's kind of working. The six-member shifts really are working. We're busy, but we're maintaining it. Yes, we maintain it with overtime, but it is still cheaper, I think, than um, hiring full-time members and in, in having that. Um, overhead of the the health insurance that goes with that that's why we haven't really got to that point so it, yeah. it, it's working okay. you know and obviously I see the same overtime numbers you see you yeah. know, and it, it is what it is and it's it's it again it's it's to maintain but it is large a number as these are um, two things it is cheaper than than hiring people because of the health benefit that we had before as well as all the other unfunded liabilities correct and even their contract is got to be careful how I said this but it's not as robust as some of the area towns contracts whereby if they bring in off-duty members they're getting a two or four hour minimum our members are getting one I couldn't afford to operate if th this budget would be much larger if we had what some of the other towns had and I think the firefighters here know that I think they understand it's working um, I mean, from their perspective, I'm sure they'd love to have what they do, and they'd also love to have four-man engine companies. And, and but the reality for Abington is that's going to be difficult to 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 make work with, with you know within the, the confines of the budget that we that we have. Very simple question: what, what is the total number of your authorized force, and what do you actually have today? So, if you have a, that's goes the to members. Experience. Yep. Including yourself, so from top down, so you as a qualified firefighter through the twenty-seven line. members, including the executive assistant let me break this down we have four groups of six members each whereby each group has one captain so we have four captains and each group has five firefighter paramedics cross-trained so there's 20 um, 24 members right there we have one deputy chief who is in charge of fire prevention as well as his duties 
Uh, he works 40 hours a week. We have one fire chief who is in charge administratively of the entire thing. That's myself, 40 hours a week. And we have one administrative assistant, my secretary. She's 35 hours a week. That's the entire staff. That's the entire department. Is it just for perspective then? Then it's just it's fair to say for the firefighting force, including yourself, again as a qualified firefighter, it's seventy four thousand dollars per per member. That's what the cost. That's what is. I was trying to break down, ish. So excluding the secretary, because you're sharing her overhead amongst all of you. That's sure. The reason why and she, she does not get over time. Just yeah. You know, just no, do myself. This, no this, do this, I. This, this might be another bad question, but does she get the the pension stuff in? I know obviously she gets insurance or whoever it is gets Patricia. Yes, later. I don't believe she doesn't have the t she's eligible, but she I don't think she takes the town's health insurance in, in this particular but but the pension? position. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, okay. thanks. So again, any other questions, please feel free. That's the fire side or the general government side of the salary portion. Um, before I go into the expense side, just because we have the salaries fresh in our head, why don't we go to the ambulance sheet, and we're basically going to mirror what we just discussed. The only exception is this is a almost half of the other half of my department, which is being funded from ambulance receipts. Uh, it, it's the same thing going down. We just allot uh, or allocate funding from the ambulance revenues generated from insurance uh, to offset that cost. So you're going to see salaries here. You're going to see overtime. It's, it's the same thing, education incentive. These are much smaller numbers, but it, it just represents a portion that's being funded by the ambulance receipts. If there's no question on that, that's just really the only difference with the ambulance, with the exception of the expenses, which I can get to at the end. I was going to say, looking through the so the salaries section on the ambulance, there doesn't appear to be anything that's significantly different from last year. No, and again, it's it's the same as last year, uh, barring any contract they, they may get. How are the receipts? The receipts are good. They're, it's it's fluid. I'm glad that we're putting in for the mass health reimbursement of eighty-two thousand dollars. And again, I can't count on this, but I'm, I'm hoping we get it. Um, our ambulance receipts are based on a formula from our ambulance billing company, which is based on an estimation of transports, that we, actual transports that we will have, and based on kind of the, the demographics in town. Um, I should defer to Sean on this. You, you could do a much better job, but I'll do a quick version of it. My concern on that formula, and that is a formula we're using, is our runs are down somewhat, and I can't control that. We can't force people to go, obviously, but the reason they're down somewhat is Rockland recently put a second ambulance in operation, too. They're copying Abington. Abington has become a model, and now we're becoming a victim of our success. The area towns are beginning to operate as we are because they've seen we, we've done a good job with that. We used to go to Rockland quite often with our ambulance. We've slowed down going to Rockland. That's going to be a hit in the overall uh, number of transports. We're still going to Rockland. We still do. But that's one variable that we're seeing, I think, is reducing um, some of the overall calls. We have a couple of um, emergency health clinics in town that, on the one hand, we do go to respond to once in a while for an emergency. However, Traditionally, some people may have called the ambulance. Now they're going up the street, which, which again, patient care is paramount. That's, you know, I, I don't want to tell people what to do, but it, it may affect our bottom line, which could affect the ambulance receipts. Um, so far, the reimbursements have really kind of made up for that, and, and I, I think we're okay, but, you know, we're watching it. We could get busier, and it, it's, it fluctuates. Our overall run numbers were down last year. A lot of it was... The fire end, I attribute to the weather. We had a fairly mild, wet year, weather-wise. We didn't have a lot of the, the major storms, which, you know, one major um, snow, heavy snowstorm, we can have, you know, 50 to 80 wire down calls over 24, 48-hour period. That increases our numbers, and if we have several of them, we really didn't have a brush fire season because it was wet. Um, 
which, which, which is good. I'm not complaining about any of this, believe me. It's a good year. But it, for the first time in an, a large number of years, our numbers actually went down somewhat. It's, it's, it's not a perfect science. Um, a lot of it I attribute to the, to the weather and just some of the other, the ambulance side as well, a slight reduction in the calls. We could have a year, it, this time next year when I write the annual report for 2018, we could see a spike again. You know, I, I, I'm not seeing that trend at the moment, but it, it's somewhat fluid. You also mentioned Southfield. Southfield is a variable. I don't know what's going to happen in Southfield. I know that we're all seeing or hearing the rumors of the plans. If from the last time I saw plans at Southfield, and Rick, or if anybody here knows anything different since then, but one of the proposed plans for the Abington portion at Southfield that I believe we would be responsible for, re for responding to is to build um, kind of a complex like Crown Colony in Quincy. You see it's a split. Um, I, th I think it was between seven or eight 12-story type of medical office, any type of building. That's a big response um, portion for our department, if that's the case. We haven't seen the plans, physical building plans come across us yet, so I don't really know where they are with that. And traditionally, Southfield, over the last few years, every couple of years, the whole thing changes anyway. So I'll believe it when they build it. Uh, you know, I think they, they could pull 4,800 brand new housing units up there. I hope not, but I don't know what eventually is going to come out there. So, well, this is for the town manager. If they develop Southfield, will that be a new revenue stream? Well, to the extent that it would, it would help our new growth in terms of our property taxes, it wouldn't be. Now, to what extent, you may have to be seen. So and if there's business 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 businesses business. put in on the Abington side, yeah. again, yeah. yeah. Extended it would overcome the service demand, you have to say. Okay. So, so nobody really knows. some good financial projections. Right now it's you know, just touchy feeling. It's, yeah, there's you know, take, from you know, all that I've seen and, and heard, the, the plans are continually up in the air as they're trying to recruit businesses. I know they were actively trying to recruit Amazon, mm -hmm. and there were there was a lot of talk that the the main office of Amazon would have been on the Abington side of things. Um, I believe that our zoning does not allow for housing on that section. Correct. So it would be just commercial or industrial. Right. Um, so we don't have a housing specific mm -hmm. concern there, but and hopefully that remains <laughs> because <laughs> you know, a lot of this is based on the current economy, and who knows where we're going to be. You know, if if the economy Absolutely. takes a turn. One way or the other, this could affect the grant plans there. So, but I know, I, don't know. I, I also know if I remember from previous conversations, there were concerns about accessibility for your members getting right. two calls there. So, and, and I don't see that going away. Sure. You know, it, it's in my in your report. I'm not going to discuss it tonight because there's really nothing pertinent in the budget, although you just kind of open the door. So, I'll be very quick with this. I would like to move the fire station to North School. That would be my goal. I don't know if it's going to happen. I've officially requested that. Route 18 is getting busier. Um, both stations are old. Both stations are tired. Um, I know we just built a school. I know that there's not a lot of money in town. I get that, but I, I'm not doing my job if I'm not telling you that the long-term needs of your fire department. Um, I think Route 18, we're, we're losing more space in the front of our station. We probably won't be able to park the ladder truck out there anymore. We'll have to do something different with that. Um, long term, we probably should be moving the fire station off of Route 18, especially if Southfield begins to build out. I don't know if, you know, North School, you can shoot right up 58 on the Trotta. Right now, we have to go up 18. You can still get the Trotta, but um, as you can imagine, the traffic from 3 o'clock till about 6 o'clock every day, if my forces are up at Southfield in that portion, it's almost like a drain trap. Um, they have to come back out, and if there's somebody on Green Street or up in the Walmart area, and everybody, my department, if it's a box alarm and I have all of my firefighters up there at that point, we're cut off. Um, not that no school could, would be perfect for that, but it, it would certainly help to, to try to come down 58 instead of 18. Who knows? But, you know, there, there's an opportunity, I think, that, that possibly could be town-owned um, available land that 
geographically, the location really isn't bad for a fire station. And I'd be proposing probably combining both stations into that one. And then you could sell off both other, well, you, you could free both current fire stations now for whatever the town wanted to do at that point um, to sell it off or make it available. But that's another conversation for another time. But looking long term, I, I can see that's going to be a major issue coming up. Sean, did you have something? <coughs> I, I did, not related to um, Southfield or yep. L&R or whoever else they may have been. You um, did, did, I was still stuck on the first page. I apologize. And I did have a question as it relates to uh, your capital lease. And, and I don't know, John, if this is going to be to you or to Rick, so I'll address it through the chair and he can give it to whoever, whoever wants to jump up. Um, one, again, this is personal. my personal opinion is capital belongs in the capital plan shouldn't belong in an operating budget. I disagree that it's an operating expense. While it is used annually, it still is a CapEx piece. Second is I'm not certain I understand fully what the BPO happens to be, the bargain purchase option at the end. And it's small numbers compared to an ambulance. I get that. Um, and I'm certain it's an X series from Zoll. Is that what you guys I, got? Um, regardless, the point being is that, <laughs> that, that the point at hand. Physio control. The, well, I'm sorry. Um, the, so nevertheless, the uh, the question really kind of comes down to is why, why wouldn't it not be better served to keep that as part of um, the capital plan and put that as part of the capital trust that we do at the special town meeting in the fall when we have it? Two, it would give you some freedom, right, with regards to how your true expenses are because it's it's like it's almost misclassed because it's not equipment repair, repair or maintenance. And it gives that flexibility. Second, is it's one of those it's it's ambulance receipts. This is a you know a manual advanced life support cardiac monitor used to provide advanced life support care in the community, which one would argue that either comes from ambulance receipts or comes from the capital trust. And we all chat about that. Now that is the discretion of the chief and the town manager as to how they want to present the budget. But those are things that usually pop for me. Um, we usually talk about that with the police department with their cruisers and I'm some sorry, Sean. I, I have to interrupt. What is it you're asking? <laughs> it's called a BP. His cardiac monitor. The cardiac monitors oh, okay. that he mentioned. So, so specifically, 50, on the list that he fifty. took fifty. Well, that's the first thing he had called out. This would be in the sec, expense sec, portion. Sec, yeah. Second item on this, his for second bullet item down, that references fifty-two forty-one as the line item, seven thousand dollars. Very specifically with regards to a cardiac monitor. I would assume that you have two or three. You have two ambulances. You have a spare cardiac monitor. Correct. Okay. Um, and they have traditionally a five-year shelf life, so they should be expensed and depreciated appropriately. So the challenge comes down to is, isn't that just simple capital? And if it's capital, why wouldn't it be on the capital budget? That's ultimately the question. So I don't know if that's right. <laughs> I, I'll take it if you want, just and rip jump it if you need to. But well, since it's, it's you're right there, it's obviously funded through the ambulance receipts and whether it's uh, going down on the lifespan, is, I think, is it excessive beyond five years or within five years? I think that's I, because based upon the cost, if it's within five years, it's what I do. The front line is five years, but realistically, we're getting at least 10 years out of these. Yeah. Um, and it, it also could be in the ambulance expenses as well. Perhaps we could just move it into that. It could be a simple line item transfer of instead of the 7,000 to that, we could transfer it to that. That's the number is the same. That's just it, it's basically a housekeeping item. My suggestion to uh, <coughs> the town manager on this was more pragmatic. Quite honestly, I didn't want to risk if for some reason there wasn't a capital budget again this year, Tom, meaning we need the cardiac monitor to be to stay in business. And this was a way that we could do it uh, within my budget. I was willing and I did eight that first year of that purchase um, out of my existing budget. And I uh, moved things around within FY18 to make that work so that we could physically get that cardiac monitor in service immediately. That's oh. why I why I did that. I'm sure, not disagreeing sure. with what you're where you're I coming from, but have, that's we the reason we did it. Having a capital budget for multiple years now, I'm sure. I know there were times that the past. I know, and uh, probably going back several years, when uh, many times. That's, a, that's an even better answer, 
So, so, so def, de deferentially, um, one, I think you do a fantastic job with your budget, especially compared to previous generations of folks in your seat. You've definitely helped evolve that for certain. Two, um, I think as a matter of comparability, it's an ambulance expense, it should be under the ambulance expense. If you're going to treat it as an expense and, you know, as an operating lease and, you know, so be it, that's ultimately your choice. Our job is to opine whether or not we <laughs> like seeing it that way or it makes any sense. Um, and the reasons why I have that preference, I get it. You fully understand it. We, we both work in the same industry, so I understand the absolute need for it. Um, but the goal here with the ambulance enterprise account was to say the offset the expense of the operation of the ambulance. And that, that very well could have just simply said, it makes perfect sense there. I can ignore the, bar the bargain purchase price option because the question that really comes down to is if you're paying 28 grand, you're financing a good portion of that particular expense. So if you're paying 8%, you're not paying any money on the capital trust fund, right? Because that's all based on free cash and contributions into free cash. You're not bonding anything. You're not paying short. You're not doing short. You're over my head at this point, but that's okay. <laughs> so you're, you're just paying money. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say if it's capital, we, we're not paying any interest expense. And that's, that, was the, that was the basic, right? If we're looking to be a finance committee, penny wise, pound foolish, that's. So it's all coming from the receipts. Right. So that's my opinion, is it? And move it and I just don't disagree. And, and I think um, it simply could be a housekeeping issue on our end. We, we can just transfer. I had the money in the equipment thing. I didn't necessarily have it this in FY18 in the ambulance expenses. So I felt compelled and more comfortable putting it in the regular equipment expense. We can, moving forward, certainly make that change. Is it a dollar purchase option? So, so typically, you, say it's a, you, you can buy it out at the end of the lease? Yes, so, yeah, so we will it, own it at the end, yes. But, but what, what will you pay at the end of the lease? So typically, is, is, it, like, is it essentially four yearly payments and then you own it? Correct. Or is there yes. a purchase price at we, the end of those four We own four it at the end. Okay. It's through Stryker Financial? Sure. No, not, a, not a worry. So, so there, but here, here's the point back to Rick, and I'll let this particular bone go. You are paying interest expense, so you are paying more if you did it through the capital trust. As long as we can agree that the source of funds is not the question, right? The source is going to be funding is being paid. It's fund maintenance. It, yeah. you're, you're actually paying, in, you're, you're, you're financing it, so. Yes. Which. If I said it that way, it wouldn't be easier. That was my ultimate <laughs> question. It makes sense to keep it in capital. Your professional background is finding the old one. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to, unless you have, again, questions, we, we still have to go through the expense side of the budget on both. While we're still on ambulance and we're talking ambulance equipment, do we want to stay on the ambulance sheet and we'll go down and I'll... We can talk about the, the ambulance, ambulance sheet is expenses. Smaller, so I think we can Correct, go through yep. that quickly first. Yeah, and then there's we'll only go to the five fire expense. Yep, or four. So the expenses from the ambulance side, it begins with commissions pro EMS. That is the money set aside from the ambulance receipts, which goes to our billing company, Pro EMS in Cambridge. They handle all of our uh, medical billing, and that's on a commission basis, and that's kind of right off the top, but we, we transfer money from the ambulance receipts anticipated what that cost would be. So that's to pay for the billing company. Uh, the supplies budget, these are the 45,000, these are strictly for ambulance supplies. Um, and, and again, we're an advanced life support ambulance, so we have the medications, the syringes, all of the, uh, it's not just Band-Aids anymore, although we do have certainly plenty of bandages and Band-Aids, but it's much more invasive um, IV fluids, IV needles, and like that, the medications. We do try to swap out with the hospitals when we can. There's some medications you can't, or if that the medications expire, a lot of the hospitals won't replace that. We have to purchase that. So the, the, that first one, the commission's one, can you just explain that one more time? So we, we somebody else bills? There's a company that does our billing, and that's They're basically the cost for yes. them doing the billing. Uh, it's It's... I would have to hire another full-time um, administrative assistant or a full-time oh, member. I, I literally was just going to ask if the administrative assistant yeah. could do it. Not to say that she has the time, but yeah, that's, uh, that's it, the issue is the time. All right. And, and her time is still spent actually transferring the medical calls 
to the billing company. Yeah. We still do that. We, we, we are still involved, but then they take it and they're dealing with the ever increasing complexity of the, the health care laws, yeah. the billing, and yeah. you know, the, right. the insurance, I, I should say. That. So that, that's what that is. And again, this is right off, pretty much off the top from the ambulance revenues yep. coming in. Yep. The supplies. Yep, the 45,000. Would that be, if we were looking at moving the cardiac monitors to the ambulance, would that be where that went or would that go in other expenses? That would probably go into the supplies, correct? Yeah. And again, that could be a housekeeping I think I can talk to, to Rick and the town account or whatever and see if instead of having that 7,000 in the the overall department equipment thing, we could specifically put in the ambulance supplies. It, it's doing the same thing. Line item altogether. Yeah. That was my, uh, my other wonder was if that would just be a new line item. I mean, that's a housekeeping item we can take care of. I, I, did, I do agree with, with Mr. Ty Dr. Tyler that uh, that, that would be probably more appropriate within the ambulance section of the budget just for tracking purposes. Uh, the other, there is a zero balance on that. I think that's a place saver at this point. The ambulance lease purchase, um, 55613 I think we have one more year of this and then A4, Ambulance 4, is paid off. And not that we're going to save this because I'm going to go right back and try to request another ambulance to replace one of our older ones. There's a sheet on our apparatus I'll get to in a moment, but um, once this ambulance is paid off, we're going to need another one to replace one of the older ones because they're constantly front line. And this is another probably stupid question, but is there a point where we sell the ambulances and we actually can recoup some of them? I mean, I know we probably depreciate them, which means we probably have to pay tax on all that, but is, is there a... Municipal uh, services. Yep. I don't think we're going to get much for it. Yeah. it certainly not as an ambulance. We, we've exceeded. I'll show you a sheet in a moment, and, and it'll be a picture that will go with the title. Our oldest ambulance, Rescue Two, that's the white ambulance. Um, we're beginning to have trouble from the state certifying it to even stay on the road. Right now, it's a reserve ambulance, and the only reason they they're finding issues it's it's body corrosion and it's minor but yeah. they're sticklers <laughs> they're doing their job um mechanically safety it's still running but we're starting to get some cosmetic issues that we had to have repair this year there's some structural defects in it is in, in two of our ambulances which twice we've had repaired if the ambulance is basically a box on a chassis at the rear of the ambulance the two doors open up up in those corners, they're cracking. Mm -hmm. It's not unique to Abington by any means. Route 18 is not helping us. This is the reason our newest ambulance was a much larger um, chassis and a, a much larger um, size to, to try to prevent that. Um, they just get wear and tear, they're getting old. And we're, there's only so much. So I'm hoping to get, once this is paid for, ultimately it would be to replace Rescue 2. We have three ambulances, we operate two, but all three of them are always in the mix. Anytime one ambulance goes out, our old ambulances immediately places a frontline piece. So, and it's the same with the engines, actually. Sure. Um, at least right now, there's, there's a payment plan for the ambulances, and, and as long as we can get one more year out of Rescue 2, I'm hoping to continue this trend of, of the, the five-year lease payment for the ambulances to, to replace another one. Do you see it anywhere down the road where that would sort of stop or at least there'd be a gap or is it just every year it's going to be good to continue to turn them? I, I think we're, we're going to be doing that every year. As much as I'd like to save the money, at that point our, our middle ambulance is going to reach the end of its life. That also has the same yeah. structural defects. We're not getting the, the body um, corrosion yet as much, but five years from now that's going to be right ready to go as well and, and again this is crazy but if you if we are having issues like that can we when we go to purchase them do something about so that like we, we could definitely make sure that that wouldn't happen 
again, the, the newest ambulance we have, yep. it looks like it, an international truck. Yep. Uh, it's well, a, I mean, 15 years down the road or 10 years, whatever, the, however old, we could still have the corrosion, stuff like that. Are we looking at stuff like that to say, all right, you know what, we're definitely not going to have this issue because we're going to fend it off on day one? At some point, there's a, there's a, there's a usable lifespan with, with all of our apparatus, whether it's yep. fire or ambulance. Um, I'll get into that with the warrant article actually sure. in depth. Um, then you can just get into it then. Okay, uh, all right, that's probably the best way. Yeah, literally. Okay, yeah. otherwise we'll be duplicating. The transfer out budget appropriation, again, that is, um, Rick, could you help me with this? And this is what Sue does when we're transferring out. This is from the ambulance receipts. It's really just to offset the overall cost of, I should have checked with the accountant what that is. It's the 319754. It's more of a housekeeping, yeah, realistically. So yeah. That just offsets the whole budget. It's not really one thing, it's, it's a transfer of money. Thank you. Thank you. So those are transfers out from the ambulance budget to the fire budget, no, essentially? To, no, to the other, to soft costs. In other to health like insurance to or other, other, other areas that pay for ambulance costs, essentially. And if I'm incorrect, I will correct that to ASAP, but that is my understanding. That is, that, that it offsets other, other areas of the municipal budget. It's because it's an enterprise account, and again, that number that number is not generated by me. That's generated uh, downstairs at the town hall. So I, I don't really. Does anyone have any further questions on the ambulance section of the budget? All right, now if we go back to fire, um, page 25 of 66, begins with electricity. These are just all of the rest of my, or, or the fire department's expense line items. Uh, most of these are fairly self-explanatory, but electricity budget, that's 27. That's up somewhat, again, that's a differential to try to meet the actuals that we have been spending the last couple of years. And, and just, you know, throughout the, the electricity budget throughout town this year, we're still tracking it. Our net metering agreement went in place. We just started to bring the benefits of that base effect at the end of November. So they should be saving us about 10 to 11 percent. So over everything we've pretty much seen so far. Uh, so uh, we're hoping that the actuals we've seen so far, so some of the Town manager recommendations to date generally has been more in line with what I was anticipating. So some of the requests for the most part have been higher than what the rec but recommended budget has been demonstrating. So uh, so just keep that in mind. So a lot of the, the actuals that you saw the end of the last past fiscal year are higher than what the um, I'm hoping that so the far is being recommended next year. Did you do that with Verizon too? <laughs> <laughs> uh, below that is gas for heat. These are again, these are both fire stations uh, total. That's department budget total. Uh, building repair and maintenance budget. Um, again, things within both stations that break down. This could be electrical, mechanical, heating across is the that, board. Is that? Um, oh, sorry. No, continue. I'm looking at the next one. Next one is equipment repair and maintenance. This is reflecting that. This is where that $7,000 increase went. Um, and these okay. also went up slightly anyway, but um, this is just, again, all of our equipment, some of the, you know, the vehicles as well, the jaws, and any type of equipment we have just to maintain that. Other property-related services, 
this is um, it, it's very similar to the to the building repair, but um, you know the overhead doors, the um, this one gets me every year because you know the antenna tower behind the station, just all, all those expenses we have. Uh, the postage that's self-explanatory. The telephone. This again went up to reflect the the actuals that we had been seeing the last couple of years. That, that's the telephone bills as well as the the little air cards we're paying for. That that's really what's driven that. And that that's more like cell phone stuff. It's a cell phone card. Yeah, it's for each ambulance has a laptop computer yep. that has a little. It's like a mini cell phone built in. It's just a, yeah. an air card. Yep. I, I, Wayne would probably say that it's for Wi Fi. I would so. say what it actually is. In mm -hmm. my mind, it's an air card. I don't know what it is now. The cardiac monitors also have a, a very similar device uh, where we can send the cardiac strips um, to the hospitals directly. You know, they're separate. And each one is a monthly payment, they're just going up. So we, we have two separate phone systems at the station. We're still working to combine our old ancient copper Merlin system into the newer system. Wayne has been working with that. Again, the age of our stations is, is we're running into issues with the old copper lines that were built in 1964 and 73 and combining that over into the newer system. Wayne has been working on this to, to try to build it and we're almost there. So that would be a slight reduction in one of my older systems, but that's why the, the phone, um, the actuals are up there. The plus side is the fire department phones were the only one working several times when the town computer phones went down, but Wayne has since fixed that. So. <laughs> Sometimes older is better. Um, the radio budget appropriation, again, that's all of our department radios, maintaining the radios, whether it's the portable radios, the vehicle radios, and even our base station radios that we use. The next in the last page. Alarms, that's just basic smaller fire alarms and other types of alarms that we have within the department, maintaining that. Um, office supplies, self-explanatory. The computer maintenance, self-explanatory, I believe. Uh, building maintenance, that's zero, but the next one is the realistic one, the custodial supplies. It's simply just the custodial supplies for, for two stations. Um, and again, don't forget, these are me in 24 hours a day. So, you know, that they're used a lot. Uh, the fire, gas, and oil, this is for vehicles. Uh, this is the gas and diesel oil, as well as oil is the preventative maintenance that the highway department does. Uh, they maintain our stuff, but we pay for the actual fluids. The, the newer apparatus is, have begun using um, different type of urea fluids that, that burn, they, they, we have to add to the engines. Um, the motor, if you to will. To the diesels? To the diesels, yeah. you know, so that, that's an increase that we traditionally did not have, but we have that now. And they're all coming like that now. And you have to do that? Yes. State inspection? Uh, federal. Yeah, yeah federal. that's what I mean. Yeah. I wish we were exempt. I just didn't know if they didn't need them to do it. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's with regards to the whack with it. And you know, you're here from now, the hydrants are pain in the back, so. Mm. I wish we were exempt for, for a number of reasons, but why not? Uh, the vehicle supplies, again, this is maintaining, you know, this could be tires, um, all that types of stuff. Uh, the intermunicipal budget appropriation. This is the um, fee that we pay to Holbrook for maintaining the dispatch. Uh, the town of Holbrook dispatches the, in, in provides emergency medical dispatch service as well as monitoring our municipal fire alarm system um, at the dispatch center in Holbrook, at Holbrook Fire. Um, this has been a godsend since we started this, actually, and it's cheaper than anything we could do. If we were to do this ourselves strictly for the fire side, I'd have to hire a minimum four, fire, four dispatchers. They don't necessarily have to be firefighters, um, which would far exceed this number. Um, I think the last time we broke this down, by hour for the year, it's cheaper than a lifeguard. Not, nothing against the lifeguards, I don't mean it that way, but it was that's kind of the ballpark we're, we're spending. Um, and, and this is proven, we've had major incidents in this town, multiple incidents in this town, and we, they have never dropped the ball since we, the night we started with that. 
And Chief, that's, that's just for appropriately stated, it, Norfolk County control. It's not it's being run by Holbrook, it's Norfolk County control, so you have all of that support and access. Correct. Yeah, I think that's... that's and it's continuing to grow. Um, it started out, it was at the Holbrook Fire Station, and they were doing Norfolk County control. Holbrook is Norfolk County, and besides, and, and I'm, I'm going to go when they started to where we're at now quickly, they were dispatching Holbrook Fire and Police, they took on Norfolk County, meaning any fire department in Norfolk County that was having a fire um, or major incident, they're kind of the hub for that town. If the town of Canton was having a fire, they need, a dis they, they need mutual aid from that area, they were called Norfolk County Control, Norfolk County Control does that. We have this now in Plymouth County. Plymouth County Control does it for all the, the municipalities in Plymouth County. They're down at the Sheriff's Department in Plymouth. So this is, Holbrook began doing that same service for Norfolk County. They had a great dispatch team. Shortly after that, they took on the state hazmat team, statewide. And we're in the state, and this is following 9-11 when everybody had white powder scares. They were running that statewide for the entire state to activate the, the state hazmat teams. Shortly after that, the town of Sharon um, Fire Department, which was very similar demographically to Abington Fire, um, were desperate for a dispatch center. Holbrook and Sharon are not contiguous towns. However, they don't touch. However, they're both in Norfolk County, and Holbrook offered and Sharon accepted to provide the emergency dispatch service for the Sharon Fire Department. And it worked. And it was done via microwave and via landline. Um, and that was the beginning of the model. Abington was desperate a number of years ago for a dispatch center. We were constantly dumping out our stations with nobody back there, which not only is that inconvenient because I don't have anybody to me an apparatus should another call come in, I had nobody or we had nobody monitoring the municipal fire alarm system. We would literally be out on a call and you would hear over the air an alarm coming into the station because we telecast that on the radio system because there was nobody in the station and we would have to scramble to get somebody back to the station to see what the alarm is and then go there. It, and it was getting worse. Um, if somebody were to call the, the fire department back then, it would divert to the police. They were getting busy. We were constantly doing that. It, it simply wasn't working. We looked at how can we solve this. The number one simple answer would be we have our own dispatchers, and we need a minimum of four to maintain 24 hours a day. And the cost for that was roughly $250,000 going back about 2010. Um, town didn't have it. We looked at perhaps doing some of the police that doubled the cost because they would need theirs as well. Um, we simply didn't have it. I looked at Holbrook because I knew they were doing Sharon. They offered a cost initially, it was $100,000 for the year, to do not only dispatch, we physically transferred one of our fire alarm receivers to Holbrook. It's connected via, it's a radio system. Even our old wired system converts to radio, so everything's sent over there. They also do our state required emergency medical dispatch service, whereby if anybody calls 911 for a medical emergency by state law, I believe they have to have um, a person trained in emergency medical dispatch procedures to stay with that caller, if they so choose to, to provide pre hospital or pre arrival emergency care. It was a cost with that. Holbrook included that within their, their cost, as well as our normal day-to-day -day fire dispatch. Engine three to fire alarm, their fire alarm. I need the wiring inspector, I need the water department, I need national grid. Um, that freed up our people now to leave our station and go out on the second ambulance. Now they're out doing that. I still try to get somebody back at the station for, for business-related things, but all the radio and emergency traffic is going through Holbrook 24 hours a day and it's been doing that for about I think six years now we use our radios at the station more for administrative needs usually it's testing fire alarm systems or whatnot it's not necessarily emergency it's the emergencies are all over there they maintain the dispatch records which transfers into our fire reporting system which then transfers and backfills the demographics to our ambulance medical records uh, we've built up a great system with this. So initially it started at 100,000. Abington is the busiest system, uh, busiest town in their whole center right now. 
Uh, they just took on Canton. Canton, I think, is going to finally beat us, but I think Canton is paying more. So this has gone up in price over the last couple of years to reflect really um, our call volume for what they're doing, but we're, we could never do what they're doing um, and, and pay for it on our own. Quickly to wrap this up, because obvious reasons. So Abington became the second town after Sharon. After that, the town of Whitman, uh, fire and police. They're actually answering the 911 for both departments. They <coughs> dispatch for the fire. I don't believe they're dispatching for the police, but they're answering both 911s for both departments over there. They have taken on Canton Fire, um, as well as their fire alarm system. They have just, and they will soon be taking on Rockland Fire and police. I think they're going to be dispatching for the police. Um, so th this has grown out um, to be quite, quite a model of a system uh, for the Commonwealth with how they're doing it. They're not the only one. There's one down in um, the towns of Norwell, um, Norwell Hull, Hingham, and Cohasset. They have a, a small dispatch center that does those four towns, both departments in each one, total of eight departments, fire and police. Duxbury is beginning a small regional dispatch center with Duxbury and Plimpton, and there may be a couple other towns are looking at that as well. So by far, I think we have the most robust one at this point. Um, back to the budget, that's what this number is reflected on. So. Sounds like it makes some money. What's that? Sounds like it makes Holbrook money. Um, they're breaking even with it. Yeah. Holbrook pays more into it than any other town. Really? They, they actually wanted to increase these numbers, but they realize it's, it's difficult for the municipalities. Sure. Um, I'm involved as one of the chiefs as part of the dispatch center, um, and, and I see their numbers. Holbrook pays almost three times this. Oh, wow. They're doing Holbrook fire and police, but, and they're also maintaining the personnel and the benefits and all that that we don't. So this has this worked out well, in my opinion. I know that when I first came on to this committee, it was a huge, it was fairly close to when we started it, and it mm -hmm. was a huge relief and weight off of your shoulders yes. and the committee in general. Because for the first time, I have somebody okay. constantly monitoring so. the fire alarm system, or so. I have somebody, if I have a firefighter out there that's hurt or in distress or whatever, they have somebody to talk to. Um, I remember when I was a captain, um, that one of your members, she's not here tonight, at her kitchen table one night running three incidents, literally. I'm the captain. I had, there was an incident at her house, her house, it was minor, and I had two other incidents going on, and I'm trying to contact other towns at her kitchen table just be before I can even get out to even try to respond because it was, it is what it is, but one call to Holbrook, done. They, they'll take care of anything, whatever you need, so. I think we have two lines left to go over. Where were we? I probably travel, uh, travel budget, a thousand dollars. This is minor. This is really um, more mileage. There's a, con a small contractual thing. If usually it's when when a member is um, training, training at the fire academy. There's there's a small mileage, as well as any time we cross the bridge in Boston and you you get the bill for the. Mm -hmm. It was so much easier to give them a dollar going through because it's it's actually it's. <laughs> The amount of time it takes to pay that $1 bill with three different departments going through it. But anyway, that's where this is coming from as well. Uh, in the dues and fees appropriation, this also had a slight increase to um, reflect the actuals. This is NFPA, a lot of the, um, like the Fire Chiefs Association, there's a few trade magazines that we get to keep pertinent up on information. The deputy um, purchases a lot of current uh, NFPA fire code books that it constantly changes. That, that's pretty much where that is reflected from. Anyone have any more questions on the fire section of the budget? All right. So that's my FY19 budget <laughs> request. If, if you have any other questions on that, I have one warrant article, which I'll try to get through quickly. It's only one. <laughs> In your packets, you, you actually have a copy of it. It's the small one-liner. We need an engine. We need a fire engine. Um, I know we just bought a tower truck. It's not the same thing. Apples and oranges. It's, it's like an English teacher and a math teacher. They are not the same thing. They have different missions. They have different roles. 
Um, an engine is the backbone of the fire department. Actually, if you want to go to the, the fancy page I provided for you with all of the fire apparatus on it, this is going to explain it better. This is basically our current fleet. I didn't include some of the smaller ancillary vehicles on this, but um, we have four engines, engine one, two, three, and four. They're not in that order um, age-wise. Engine four is the oldest. Engine four is a 1982 Maxim that, was on that is currently on loan to us from the town of Bridgewater. We were desperate for an engine when I first took over as chief and Bridgewater had one that they offered to us. I don't really think they expect to get it back. However, they own it. It's on permanent loan from them. Uh, it's a 1984, it's basic, um, excuse me, 1982, it's basic. This is frontline, this is frontline today because the tower truck's getting some maintenance done on it and I had another engine out getting some maintenance at the highway department. This is going out the door if we had a fire today. This is not just a reserve piece that I'm trying to get rid of because it's old. This is front line. And it's 1982, and it doesn't meet any of the current NFPA stats or whatever. It works. It's safe. However, the fleet's getting old. The next oldest engine is engine one, which is 1996. After that is engine two, which is the front line engine at station two on Rockland Street. That's from 2001. And both of those engines were, at one time, the frontline primary piece. We bring them down a notch, if you will, um, each time we replace an engine. Although it's somewhat of a misnomer because bringing an engine down a notch isn't really true because it's still a frontline engine. If there's a fire tonight, hopefully there's not engine two as well as engine three and engine one are responding. The tower's not available tonight, it's, it's getting maintained. Um, so engine one and engine two were both previously frontline engines. They were the newest we had at one time, getting all of the wear and tear, responding on every medical and, and fire type call until they get tired, and then we bring them down a notch to relieve them. They're still right up there front line. So the, the fleet's older. Engine three is our newest engine. That is the primary engine out of headquarters. That's where the officer is assigned. Um, that's the 2006. It's already 12 years old. That's the one with the most miles? The mileage is somewhat off on this. These miles are actually okay. off the, but yes, that, that is the most miles. I was going to ask the same miles. question. I was going to say, it wow, that's driving. <laughs> the mileage we, seems. We got engine three used. That was not new to Abington. Yep. The, the previous chief purchased, it's what they had at the time. That was a demo. We took it as a frontline truck, and it's been frontline ever since. We got it in 2008, I believe. My son loves it. <laughs> it's good when it's running. It was at the highway again today. We've had a lot of electrical issues with it. Um, it's getting tired, as, as well as the other ones. The typical life expectancy of a frontline engine is five to seven years, and then it can go into reserve and you start bringing That doesn't mean we're going to get rid of it after five or seven years. We keep them for a long time. Our frontline engine is already 12 years old, and it's going to take a year to get a new one. Even if we were to fund this tonight, it's, it's anywhere from six months to a year before you actually get one. Um, this has the other apparatus. If you're interested at the bottom, you have the three ambulances. This kind of explains what I, I was talking about earlier. Rescue 2 was the oldest. That was 2002. That's also, um, I can't do the math at this point. It's late. And <laughs> how many so, years? 10 15, years old. 15, 15 thank 15, you. 16. And uh, A3 and then A4. A4 is the newest. A3 is the second. And Rescue 2 is the oldest. A4 is the one we're currently paying for now. When that's paid off, I'd like to replace Rescue 2 with an A5 or whatever we decide to call it um, and, and bring those down one notch. Also in your packet is this sheet from Tax Exempt Leasing. There's two pages on this, and they're identical except for the dates and the figures. The top page says February 2018. This is current as of this week. The page under it is about six months old. It was back in October. Um, this was my initial query as to if we were to conduct, if the town chose to do a lease purchase on a $600,000 engine, which is what they are going for currently. Um, the breakdown on that at a 2.9% back in October uh, for five years, it was roughly $130,000 a year. If they chose to do 10 years, it would bring it down to 70. 
Um, I personally wouldn't recommend the 10 years because I, within that 10 years, we'll be asking for another engine at some point, but that's for the town to decide. That's not my decision, actually. I just wanted to get these two down. The current one this year, these prices have gone up because the rates have gone up. In six months, they've gone up. So what originally back in October for a five-year payment would have been $130,000 a year. Now it is one thirty-three. It's gone up slightly. However, this is going to increase again. The cost of the engines are going to increase. And I, and I have, I, I'm requesting 600000 for an engine because it's an inaccurate number based on today, barely. Really, I should be asking for 650. However, I'm comfortable asking for 600 because of the grants that we received, the federal grants, we're doing pretty good with equipment. So I, I'm comfortable not loading the truck with brand new equipment. We have brand new hose, we have newer Scott air packs. There, there was some that I'd have to get, but so that's relieving some of that initial 50 that I, that at most towns right now would be asking for that. If for some reason the town chooses not to get one this year, which, and that's their choice, I, I get that. Next year, I'm going to be coming back asking for a minimum 650, if not seven, because, and that's based on what the apparatus manufacturers are telling me. The interest rate on the payment increase is affecting it industry right. It's, it's affecting the production model uh, or the production of the engines themselves. Everything's going up. And I'm hearing this across the board from numerous apparatus manufacturers. I, I spoke to several of them um, getting prices for these, and, and these are fair numbers. They also, they're going up. They're going to be going up. It's, it's, it's the industry. Um, so for some reason we can't do this this year. Next year I'm asking for more. The year after that it's, it's going to continue to go up at least 50000 a year. That, I'm just being honest with you because that's based on what the cost of these are going to be. Sean. Um, so, so this I think is going to be through you. You can listen to, uh, to mm. Rick and Sue who's not here. Uh, I got to say the cost of capital is exorbitant. 11% versus 23% is mind blowing. Uh, that doesn't have any opinion on whether you need your equipment. You say what you need for equipment. Having a 36-year-old piece of apparatus as a front line is nonsensical to me if it's non-functional and it doesn't meet the town's needs, so be it. My only remarks are on the pricing that was put forth. Uh, it, it is highway robbery, just being candid, highway robbery. Um, so to that end, the question to the town manager and to the town accountant is, is this something that they would pursue um, a source of funding to get a better rate, aka bond. Yes. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, uh, the chief has been updating the financial team um, as he gets pricing, and we, uh, more so Sonia, uh, treasurer collector, uh, who you know, is seeking to determine if we're better off with you know, short term borrowing, whether it's uh, temporary borrowing for a couple of years. And one, that's, one of the things that obviously we'll have to get more information on is the timing. From the time the town will vote, uh, when payments will be due, um, so you know, the time, you know, when a borrowing would be required, uh, because obviously 9 or 10 or 11 percent interest rate versus something uh, the treasurer could get you know, through, uh, through you know, uh, traditional financing sources, uh, because uh, our non uh, exempt uh, debt is dropping at the price of 800. $20,000 per year starting next year over the course of time. So within our operating budget over a period of time, we do have some uh, financing uh, flexibility from a borrowing standpoint. Uh, that makes probably more sense, perhaps, with paying those, those types of lending. Rates. So those are the types of conversations we'll be having with the internal. Uh, and this is for new equipment? So, I'm sorry? New. Yes. No. New. So, but obviously, the Yeah, especially in today's day and age, the 11, 12 percent stuff. To some extent, those are the only opportunities some, some communities may have, depending on the borrowing position at a given time. But I think we're probably in a better position uh, to do something more effective than that over the next. But the timing is going to be important uh, when our payments will be due from the time we would be incurring. 
Yeah, and just to yep. continue, just further consideration, I'd, I'd, I'd like to hear from the treasurer collector or yourself um, consideration of using a portion of the capital trust as a significant down payment to shrink the cost of capital that you borrow against. If that is something that makes sense and that's fully within your realm to do, obviously that's it's yours to set the policy and, 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 and follow them through with just brainstorming and ideas. And perhaps even uh, depending on how the rest of the budget process shapes up and some of the other issues that I know you're fully aware of whether or not uh, even uh, free cash uh, down and down payment so it's uh, and as you're well aware of the other issues basically even though I fully uh, expect there won't be another snowflake <laughs> <laughs> so I've been told but uh, so <laughs> <laughs> should have said that, should have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if I could, Sean, too. I agree with the price. I, I don't make these numbers up. It, it's, yeah, uh, no. And we're not looking for a Cadillac. I don't want a Cadillac. I want a workhorse. I want, it, when, we, when we got the tower truck, we specifically spec that out to dumb it down, to be honest with you. We, we tried to reduce computers on it. There were computer screens. We, we, we tried to dumb it down because there's more things that can break. And the one thing that I've learned in, in the years I spent in this career is it's the electronics on, on these things that, that are just, that's what breaks it down. And the, tr the truck is no good if it's not in service. So we're trying to maximize the amount of time it's in service by minimizing, if we can, the things that break. It's a lot easier said than done. And, and they're making these, that, that they're just simply more sophisticated than sometimes they need to be. You know, the pump control panels are all electronic now. I would prefer to go back to mechanical. It's what I learned on, and just I think it's easy. It's just one less thing to break, but it, it's what it is, and it, it's all driving the cost up. Um, we're not looking for the, the biggest, you know, a showpiece truck. I'm looking for a workhorse. I want something dependable. The, again, this might be crazy, but could we, instead of six hundred thousand, say, spend one hundred and fifty, and there's a company that overhauls these that would do exactly what you're saying, keep the pumps mechanical. You know, I, the only reason why I know it is I, I watch shows and yep. things like that where people are doing this stuff to actually keep these things on the road. Again, it's, it's for a different purpose. But the, is that, do you know if that, if anyone ever looks at that or if it's just like, look, we're not really looking to go down that road. We want to go to the other road. Couple inch, couple issues on that. Um, the wear and tear on these trucks is phenomenal. And I don't, the, the, you're talking the brakes, the chassis. I mean, these are the original engines, the original pumps. Um, it, I, I don't. I think it would be cost prohibitive to try to do that, as well as just the NFPA requirements. The NFPA is a National Fire Protection Association. Um, in their recommendations, not necessarily requirements, but that becomes the benchmark for God forbid there's an accident or somebody's injured, does it meet current NFPA specs? And if you're rehabbing an older truck that is already not meeting those specs, at that point, I think the town's taking on liability. Sure. Uh, is a frontline piece. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I definitely, not the liability piece, but just more like, because again, I've seen a lot of the things that you're talking about, a lot of things going uh, digital or whatever, electronic, and they do break a lot more. I deal with it every day with my phone or computer. Yeah. And so it's just, I, I didn't know if any, meaning if there's a service that does it and, and, it, and, and it will meet the requirements of what you're talking about. I, I, w I would like to, I wish we could. However, the other thing we're running into, especially with engine one and engine two, and they're great trucks, they're good engines, actually. They were built by central states who, I don't think they're in necessarily in business anymore, they're not around here. We're having trouble getting parts for them. Mm. Um, several times, and including engine three, the newest one, um, we've had to send it up to Allison Transmission up in Wakefield. Um, with engine three, we've had issues with the transmission, so we, we're looking at would be some significant repairs to try to overhaul that. I, I probably not worth it. We've told that vehicle, the newest one, several times. Engine one and engine two has been the Cummins diesel and um, Dedham several times, and they they actually custom built some parts that are simply not available anymore to keep these going. Engine four is simply not worth it. Engine four is a nice little truck. It's a Jeep, but it's just it's it's 1982. It just simply doesn't meet the safety standards or you know it's it's we try to use that as a reserve that's the truck that i try to use as a pumper when there's a brush fire to free up the the main fleet but right now as of um tonight this is a frontline truck <laughs> it's it, 
if, if I have a fire tonight, engine one, two, and three are going to it, assuming that they're available and not um, the crews aren't in the ambulance. And whoever comes back to backfill the fire station is taking engine four for the next call. So it's front line. Today, if I had a fire, it was going to be engine one, two, and four because engine three was at the highway. Normally, again, the tower truck this week, we're getting some maintenance taken care of. That's why one of the engines is just taking the place of the tower truck. But that's the reality we're in. So it's the, these are real issues that we, we're having trouble with. The main reason I didn't really go for this last year is I, I thought we could get one more year out of it. We had just got the tower truck. We were still trying to settle my the department budget on the new operations and the, and the new model, having it funded by the ambulance and that. So that, that's why I held off on this last year. But the, the engine um, replacement really is traditionally on the um, capital plan yeah, anyway. Right. So it's just we're, we've reached the point where I don't want to get to where we're at with the top, when the ladder truck died and it was like almost an emergency purchase and we're still a year out getting it. Nicole, I'm trying to get ahead of that. Look uh, how this fits, melds nicely but engine three is breaking down more often um, there's been two fires just in the last two years where I've had one was engine three we had a, f a fire on Plymouth Street engine three was the pumping engine I have firefighters in the building on a hose line being fed by this pumper and the engine died we had to transfer the hoses immediately to I think it was a Rockland engine that's a life safety issue. Mm. I had, I think it was engine two out of station two on Colonel Hunt Drive. We had a, a smaller fire. We had an issue with that. It was not a major issue. Uh, the highway department was able to repair it in the street, but it was enough it put the truck out of service immediately at the scene. Uh, the trucks are getting old. You know, it's just, it's, it's constantly use. So, and the frontline engine out of headquarters, and we do rotate them actually. We do try to rotate them in, in the warmer months. To, to save the wear and tear, however, that increases wear and tear fleet-wide uh, by doing that, but it, it tries to give the frontline engine a break. The frontline engine at Station 1 goes on almost every call, with the office, whether it's a medical, a fire, an accident, that's the truck going out the door first. Uh, that engine will go to a call when the engine at Station 2 is not, so we can maintain that ambulance if it's not life-threatening, if it's mm -hmm. a, a nuisance-type call. We're sending that engine all the way to the other end of town. If it's an emergency, that engine would go, but for other non-emergent issues, that one goes on everything. So it, it, we're certainly putting the wear and tear on these trucks. Sure. And Route 18 is not getting smoother. For, it will, hopefully, eventually, but... It's going to be a while. Yeah. So that is the only warrant request I have this year. Any other questions on the warrant article? Any other questions for the chief? I thank you for your time, and I thank, thank you, you for all the time, not just for my department, but for the entire budget cycle for, for you guys doing what you do. So We appreciate thank your you. time. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And as always, if you ever had a subsequent question like that, I'm, I'm available. So Appreciate it. Moving on to the regularly scheduled portions of our meeting. Do we have any liaison reports? Anyone? Nothing to report. Uh, do not have any correspondence this week. Um, we do have meeting minutes from last week. Uh, everyone was here last week, so everyone is allowed to vote. Um, well, those one Deb's just hand to go to actually, no, these are minutes from the, sorry, I apologize for that. We do not have our minutes from last week's meeting. We have the minutes from the January 24th meeting. Uh, no, I don't believe that we had them last week. Oh, I think okay, we have no. different. Oh, different okay minutes last week uh, Sean was not here on the 24th so cannot vote but I would accept a uh, motion on the Move to accept. I have a motion is there a second? a second motion and a second any comments questions on the meeting minutes from the 24th wonderfully prepared by our secretary <laughs> Thank you. Uh, without any questions all those in favor of approving the meeting minutes say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed abstaining We are all there. We yeah, there's only four of those. Yeah, it'll be all right. Yeah. Uh, and is there anything else that anyone else has? I will say that our next meeting is scheduled for two weeks from tonight, the 28th of February. 
Uh, does anybody have any anniversaries that they want to schedule a meeting for? Uh, any, <laughs> <laughs> any other holidays? <laughs> greeting card holidays? Anything? <laughs> no? Uh, any other motions? To adjourn. I hear a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Yes. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Without any, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? The ayes have it. We are adjourned. Thank you all. I checked. There was no one.